everyone. Uh, in this video, we're going to do a brief introduction on costs, in particular, uh, the distinguishing between accounting and economic costs. So for the first half of the theory of the firm, what we did was we built the foundations of the production function and analyzed that function um, in a short-run perspective in a, and in a long-run perspective. And we saw the differences between the two time spans and how the production function behaves uh, as inputs are increased or decreased. Now, central okay, to the concept of the theory of the firm in understanding firm behavior is, of course, understanding costs. And our objective in understanding costs is we want to show how the production function can be used to derive the costs incurred by firms in its production. So, of course, Okay, firms are not unlimited in, its, in their power or in their capability to produce. They also have a constraint, and that is the level of uh, or the amount of inputs that they put in. Okay? And those inputs are not for free. They do have prices. And those prices, we'll assume for now, are dependent on market conditions. But these inputs incur costs that the firms must shoulder in order to produce. Okay? And uh, an important definition in cost is we need to distinguish okay, between what is accounting cost and what is economic costs. And from an accountant's view, okay, from an accountant's view, uh, cost will stress out out-of-pocket expenses, historical costs, depreciation, and other bookkeeping entries. Uh, and that's the typical notion of what we think of as cost. So say when we produce something, well, we need to pay uh, for the amount of, say, um, inputs that we use, say the amount of flour, the amount of, uh, the amount of machines that we use, the amount of, um, the amount of raw materials that we have. Those need to be paid and those have bookkeeping entries. Okay? And we can add up their total amount and that will give us some idea of our cost. Okay? But... Economists okay, like to, we also look at that facet, but we also need to look at opportunity costs. Uh, and we define opportunity costs as the cost of alternative foregone. It's essentially the cost that you, uh, it's something that you could have gotten or that you could say you had two options, okay, and you chose option one and that yielded you a profit, say you would need to subtract option two's supposed profit in that. So we'll, we'll go on to that later. Now, as we said earlier, okay, in the last few videos, uh, we restricted our case to a production function with two inputs. So we have labor and capital. And the way that uh, the costing of labor and capital from accountants to economists work uh, is that they differ slightly. So... For labor costs, okay, to an accountant, uh, labor costs are expenditures on labor and are current expenses and hence cost of production. It's pretty straightforward. Labor costs contribute to the balance sheet um, or has an entry in the balance sheet and they are counted as costs. And to an economist, it's roughly the same thing. It's an explicit cost. It's something that they were to dole out, okay? Because what firms do is labor is they contract labor services at some wage rate, and we'll denote the wage rate as W. And it's assumed that this is also what the labor could earn in alternative employment. Now, that's not too realistic uh, in the real world because we know that there are varying wage rates, but for a simplistic model, okay, for a, say a perfectly competitive model, we'll first assume that the wage rate paid in one job is the same as the wage rate paid in another. And essentially, the value of labor okay, is determined by that wage rate. Okay. Now, with regards to capital, okay, accountants use okay, the historical price of capital and apply some, depreci some depreciation rule to determine the current costs. Now, for example, say, uh, an account, uh, say a company bought a machine. Okay, so they would have incurred that cost in one period, but they would also need to factor in that the machine depreciates as it's getting used and as time goes on. So depreciation cost is factored in. Economists think of it uh, similarly in that economists refer to the capital's original price. So say the initial 
price of the machine, say uh, for a bakery, say an oven, as a sunk cost and instead regard the implicit cost of the capital to be what someone else would be willing to pay for it. You say you rented out, okay, say you rented out that, uh, that machinery, that oven, what would be used to pay that oven? And what we'll do is we'll regard that, okay, cost to rent as the rental rate of capital and we'll denote that as R. So we have W, which is the wage rate for labor, and we have R, which is the rental rate of capital. Okay, now, central again to that core cost theory is the cost of entrepreneurship or, or of entrepreneurial services. Now, this is where it gets, uh, lines tend to diverge. So for an accountant, they believe that the owner of the firm is entitled to all profits. What does that mean? Say, you sold all your output, okay? So your total, uh, your total revenue would be the price of each good, say you only produce one good, times the total number that you were able to produce, less all the costs that you have, okay? So all your profits is essentially revenues or losses that you left out after paying all the input costs, okay? Now, that's a very straightforward thing to look at it, and that's essentially how an income statement is. It's uh, revenue less cost, right? Now, economists okay, have to consider opportunity costs. And those usually come in the form of time and funds that owners devote to the operation of the firm. So we'll see that part of accounting profits could be considered as entrepreneurial costs by economists. So what economists think is sometimes the profit that we compute in accounting-wise is overstated because we did not factor in for the entrepreneurial cost. Okay, so what does that mean? Say, for example, we have a guy and he could choose to either open up a bakery or uh, take a job, okay, as a baker, okay? So he could open up his own bakery and then that would incur input costs so he would need to buy land, capital, and everything, but he would be entitled to all of that bakery's profits. So that's his accounting profit. He chose that path. Or he could have decided to become a baker and... Uh, been paid a wage rate, say, W. So say he chose the path of doing a bakery and save, uh, say, uh, thankfully, say the bakery held a profit, okay? Say it earned $1,000 in for the total of the month, okay? His true profit, okay, would be, according to economists, would be $1,000, okay, less the wage rate that he would have supposedly gotten had he just uh, been a baker. So say he would have earned $500 as a baker. His true economic profit okay, is just $500, not $1,000, which is what accounting profits would leave it be. And it boils down to this definition of economic cost. And economic cost okay, of any input is the payment required to keep that input in its present employment. What would keep, okay, what would keep the baker making sure that the bakery remains open and not diverting to some other task, okay? And the remuneration the input would receive in its best alternative employment, that factors into the cost as well. Okay, so these are, so as you can see, the diversion comes in the accounting for opportunity costs. So we'll go into the procedure of cost minimization in the next video, uh, but it's important to keep in mind the different costs that a firm would potentially face.